why when I see another analyst uh, or other analysts talk about recession and how they see the risk of recession gaining momentum, I kind of scratch my head over that. Do you? Yeah, I, I do. I do sometimes because, um, you know, I think part of it is there's always the ability to cherry pick some data point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, make a sky is falling sort of case. I think the to, to, to do to understand the macro economy well I mean, requires understanding it holistically. And so that's why whenever we talk, I'm, I'm talking about what's going on with GDP in aggregate, what's going on with the overall unemployment rate and the overall right. labor market conditions, because that's that's what matters, you know, for for all of <laughs> for, for, you know, in its entirety it doesn't mean that there aren't certain pockets of folks that are stressed right now. That's certainly true. It's just in in general, you know, most households are doing pretty well with their 401ks rising, equity yeah. markets rising, yeah. house prices rising. And, you know, they're mostly employed with pretty good wage income. You put that all together, that's a pretty good story. I mean, particularly for the middle class, this is, you know, one of the better circumstances we've had for the middle class, honestly, 20 or 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the biggest headwind that we've got is affordability stinks. Uh, you know, when you, when you start adding up the inflation rate over the past three years, uh, it, you, you get to that bottom line and, and affordability stinks and it's being reflected in, in consumer debt, right? Well, I think that that's part of the flip side. You know, if you're, if you're a house, you know, if you're, if you're working a middle-class job and your wages are going up and your house price is going up and, and, you know, you've locked in a low mortgage, things are looking pretty good for you, but that doesn't mean that prices haven't risen. I think we all feel that every day, how prices have risen. So, you know, your stocks may be up, but you're asking yourself, am I actually, you know, can I, can I keep consuming more as a function of that, um, you know, in real terms rather than, you know, paying, paying more. And then right. I think, you know, there's a fair amount of folks who have been left behind, particularly uh, younger folks who aren't yep. homeowners um, who are struggling, right. Who aren't necessarily getting as, as good a wage growth, who don't have the asset savings that they're benefiting from, they're getting squeezed and they're trying to make ends meet by, you know, going in into debt, whether it's more student debt or credit card debt. And so that's really the, the group in the economy that is, is, um, is really falling behind. It's not sort of boomers or gen gen X or millennials. It's really the gen Z group that is really struggling at this point. And you can gotcha. see their disaffection in a lot of different ways. 